from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay for IBM's InterConnect 2017. The Cube's exclusive three-day coverage on day three. Great interviews coming up. Our next interview is an IBM fellow, Shankar Kalyana, IBM fellow, CTO of the Cloud Group with IBM GBS uh, Global Business Services. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the Cube. Hello, welcome, thank you. So love to have IBM fellows on because it's a status within IBM. You get uh, a lot of range to go play and dig around and have fun. Yeah. And you do it with customers. Bringing the technology piece in, um, and really, really kind of super important that you guys have that range, but also gives you depth. Absolutely. You've got like your helicopter. You can go high level and then go deep under the hood. So um, this is really interesting. Yeah. You guys are doing a lot of cloud migration on stage. You guys are showing customers. You have proof points on some of these cloud migrations. Um, not trivial, but not super hard e either. I mean, it's, you know, I'm not trying to oversimplify it. Yeah, what yeah. are you guys uh, talking about on stage around cloud migration? A lot of customer testimonials. What's the, the key migration yeah. message? So I think the, um, the, the first thing we should, you know, what we're seeing is the use of the word migrate itself has got some connotational differences. Um, the, the pure technical purist would look at that as, hey, it's about moving stuff from here to there, and that's all it takes, involves. Um, that's pure migration in the, in the pure sense of the word. But you know, the, the customer view of the world is the landscape is that that move is hardly ever pure lift and shift. You know, I got to do a lot of things around it. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, we talk in terms of the, uh, the various stages of life cycle it can actually go through. You, know, you do go, start to do nothing, which is like, well, you're looking at the workload, nothing gets done, and it's okay, retain it as is. Um, or you have to, you know, discard the workload, archive it, consolidate it, it deprecate it, or you got to, you know, move it to a cloud because it, it runs in a better, you know, infrastructure, so to speak. Uh, yeah. Those are like the simple, you know, views of world. Yeah. Uh, where it gets to be crazier is, well, guess what? When I did that, I need to remediate the platform just a bit. Okay, I got to change my Oracle 8.1 version to an Oracle 12.2 version, just a bit. It's not a big deal, yeah. but it's a small thing. But you know, you unpack the thing a bit more, and you find out that, well, you know what, my uh, the database on the on the source side and what I got to do on the target side and the dependencies I have all over the place, it just yeah. gets to be a bit more. And now you graduate from, well, it's not just platform remediation, I got to remediate my application. Yeah. Um, and then you say, well, I started remediating that, I, I found some dependencies, I need to go rewrite some pieces here. I got to re-architect stuff. And so it kind of, pro it's a progression from do nothing all the way through rewrite um, yeah. and re-architect that this space is where the migration problem really becomes You know, John Granger right? was on stage talking with customers yeah, and, and yeah. I had a, a moment when I was looking at that saying, hmm, you know, you mentioned lift and shift. I mean, yeah. well, I've heard the word rip and replace. These are <laughs> words that have been kicked around IT. Rip and replace, lift and shift is now the yeah. cloud version of that. Yeah. Uh, and some um, new cloud players will say, hey, just lift and shift or use my G Suite or my yeah. SaaS and that's now your cloud strategy. But it's harder than that on the enterprise. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, my, the quote yesterday from Don Tapscott said, if God created the world in six days because he didn't have an installed base. <laughs> right? So um, making it, yeah, yeah. moving to the cloud with pre-existing yeah. conditions like workloads that are running yeah. the companies is not trivial. It is Take not. us through how that gets done. Because yeah. it's end-to-end -end now is with a vision. Yeah. Take us through that, that methodology because the install base matters. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, in the, the journey we typically go through with clients, and clients actually go through, right? Um, and that's what we are codifying you know, for them, is um, you know, whether you're talking about a single application or whether you're talking about a portfolio, um, you got to really understand you know, the, the business drivers behind it you know, in terms of why are you trying to do, what are your real objectives? Are you trying to create an innovation platform? Or are you just trying to reduce cost at that, you know, the run cost, so to speak, um, or you're looking to change your delivery, the way the delivery itself occurs, what we call delivery transformation, what are the different objectives that really guide that? And, you know, examine the portfolio, go through a you know, pretty, um, you know, I would say, a very uh, uh, prescribed way to analyze a portfolio with tools, with methods, within, you know, with discovery techniques that end up with dispositions, right? So you can say, I got like, you know, a thousand applications, 20 of them have to retire, you know, 50 of them need to be consolidated to something else, and I need to migrate, because these 20 different workloads, to your point, may be very simple, and I don't have to do anything about them, just you know, move them to the cloud, as is. But I got this other portfolio about, hey, you know what, I got to modernize, I got to remediate, I need to do that. So you end up with 
dispositions for each of these. And each of them now have you know, what we call execution patterns that take you along the journey, right? So in the pure you know, lift and shift case that really nothing gets done except to pure lift and shift, you can do that like that, the way you know, most of the people yeah. do, and that's, that's... It's okay those, for certain situations. Yeah, absolutely, those situations do exist. Um, you know, where it gets complicated. That's the benefit of the cloud. The cloud yeah. innovation is you can actually use cloud for certain things that are great for the cloud, absolutely. like analytics. Absolutely, or absolutely right. <laughs> um, but you, you, every one of these execution patterns has some different techniques and different tools and different assets and different things that come to play. Your capabilities become different. A guy that's doing legacy code conversion uh, from, from COBOL to, to Java is not the same guy that's actually you know, doing a systems of engagement application right. you know, on, on, on native, right? So, Yes, in general it is cloud, but the skills kind of start varying. So yeah, yeah. you need to be able to understand that the journey map of how this execution patterns actually go through. Um, and when you go through that path, you'll find that, well, I got a, you know, I just advised you on how to go through the journey map, which is advised on cloud adoption. Now I'm helping you execute on whether it's migration, whether it's modernization, whether it's rationalization of the portfolio, or if I'm creating new white space innovation, you know, and and you know whether it's on Bluemix, whether it's on Amazon, whether it's on anything else, doesn't matter. Well, so right? I'm interested yeah. in sort of exploring that a little bit because when you hear migration, you hear, yeah. okay, oh, migration, expensive, complicated, yeah. time-consuming, risky. And Ginny said yesterday, look, this cloud is not just a new way to deliver IT; it's a platform for the future. It's not just yeah. a better way to do things that you used to do; it's a way to deliver things that you've never done before. Yeah. So. Now, I'm sure there's certain applications you can lift and shift, great, check. But what's the conversation like, Shankar, in terms of, well, I want to do something that's not just one little one-time cost savings. I yeah. want to do things that are going to transform my business and give me significant competitive advantage. Yeah. What are those conversations like? Yeah, so, so this conversation is actually a continuum, right? Because one of the things that clients, um, and, and our experiences have led us to this thing too, which is, you can talk about this journey maps, and you can talk about this, this story of, of month-long transformation you know, to get to the level that they really need to, but what, what clients need is the proof of value that says, look, you know, show me something now, get me something off the board quickly. So what you typically look for are those initial, you know, easy to do workloads, you know, proof points that you can show the value, because a lot of this thing is, you know, value begets value, right? So when they see things you know, working, they start getting belief in that, because the other part of the conversation is, you know, we use the word culture, but it's, it's really, you know, a lot of the, the people that we deal with, they haven't really used to this ecosystem of this complexity. They think cloud on one hand is extremely simple. It's like, you know, click and everything gets yeah, done. Auto scales. It's auto scales. Plastic right? resource. Click, yeah, it all automatically happens, right? <laughs> um, in fact, you know, um, we have this uh, discussions with clients about um, in this entire journey, yeah. you can't forget the thing called architecture, right? I mean, yeah. it just doesn't happen by magic. You still have to consume services. If someone's got to put the system together for you, right? And you had to do that. You had to architect high availability. You got to architect in you know, a four-line system. It, ain't, it just doesn't come magically, right? So the journey point is about describing that vision or what it takes to do, but you had to do that in increments and, and be able to take that journey you know, with them so where they're actually learning alongside and, and experiencing that. So we usually advocate a proof of value as a very first step. You know, migrate three workloads. You know, build a native application, do an MVP of, of something you know, that can you know, show value. Uh, API enable a specific legacy uh, functionality, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you have different kinds of these exemplars uh, depending on the scenario, you can actually do that. Okay, and there are, there are a lot of workloads where you can get some quick hits and yeah. some wins. And despite all the talk of cloud, and certainly public cloud, the ascendancy of public cloud, the core of enterprise IT apps has still not moved to the yeah. cloud. Yeah. Or, when you have conversations with your clients, should they move, why should they move, what are people thinking? All of these are pretty valid questions in the, in the sense that, you know, when we look at the portfolio analysis, we are applying, you know, pretty algorithmic and human intelligence based kinds of you know, metaphors there to be able to look at a workload and say, is this, what is the, what should be the disposition of the workload, right? Should it stay? In fact, there are workloads which should really require specialized systems and you want to keep them exactly where they are that may not be necessarily cloud ready. And that's totally okay. In fact, that's entirely advocated. You don't want to paint the town with one color and say that's the way it is. Um, on the other hand, there are workloads you could, you could say, well, I do take advantage, I want to take advantage of these drivers on the cloud, but I want to you know, retain resident, whether it's data residency requirements, you know, security requirements, whether it's just the you know, initial culture shock to say, I don't want to move it there. So you kind of get them along the journey to say, well, maybe we want to you know, help you create your own cloud um, and then you know, start from there. In other cases, 
there are certain distinct advantages the public cloud actually provides in terms of its innovation potential, the, the way the services can connect to each other, what, what kind of services portfolios are actually available to you. So I think in some of these cases, clients actually look at the promise of that, and that's why the proof of value to me is very well, important. Well that's the thing right? so that we're talking about now, is that the innovation, the innovation upside for the cloud, yeah. and the cloud promise, and how the hybrid cloud has come together with the, the surge of cloud native, yeah. with microservices and, and containers and Kubernetes, is showing a lot of great promise. People are super excited about that. And hybrid's just the workhorse, it's, yeah, get, yeah. it's the brute force, blocking and tackling. So I want you to take a minute to explain how you guys do this, because this is the needle you're threading. Um, explain how um, you guys are bringing the capabilities of uh, GBS and GTS, yeah, two yeah. different groups within IBM, to make this happen. And how does that kind of pan out in the course of your Absolutely. engagements? So, uh, let me set the context in terms of, you know, there are the, the solution view that, that you know, I typically look at and we typically look at is what I call the two by two, right? So you got this life cycle view that's the journey from how do you go from idea to scale? How do you go from advice to you know, operate? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll talk about operate in a bit. The other dimension is uh, the, the solution stack, right? Which is the business, business process, the cognitive business process, the application logic, and the data logic that, that, that powers it, and then the platform that actually enables it, right? Um, so in this two by two that every solution as a journey goes through, um, Clients typically have been placing, you know, if you look at the two by two as a cell, a yeah. bunch of cells, people have been operating in different cells, right? <laughs> so the clients will look at that and say, well, you know what, I'm going to have, you know, capability X for that one cell and vendor Y for this other cell and someone else to put this all together for me. And so that's really what's been happening in the system. And they think they're all good because yeah. all the boxes are checked. Yeah. Wait a minute, we've got a blind spot. Exactly. So that's right? what you're getting at. Exactly. The technology right. stack and the solution stack Get, sometimes people get misconfused Completely, between the two. Yeah, exactly. They're complementary. Exactly. And so where we, you know, when, when the power of IBM services is really being able to, you know, full, bring the full power of this entire stack and this life cycle together in one unified way, right? And that's what Cloud Innovate, as a method, actually does. Because what we've really done is map the journey, you know, you know, pretty pretty well based on the demand profiles. Now every client doesn't need to go through all of these things. You know, their entry points could be different. You know, we have clients who have come and told us, look, I, I know exactly what I want to do, help me to get there. You know, there are clients who want to take the whole journey with you, right, so. So yeah. it sounds great. Uh, can you give me some examples, proof points? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm interested. Um, yeah, so. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, so let me, uh, you know, talk about a couple of different examples, right? So, so one is uh, Etihad, you know, that, that um, you know, they were on uh, a stage with us yesterday. Um, you know, Etihad is a, Global Airline, as we know, and one of the things that we have done, you know, for them, you know, their proof on one of the pain points, among the many that they've actually gone through, one of the classic things that they had to do was to take their enterprise ERP systems uh, that have been running their business. In fact, you know, they are about a 13-year-old company in the annals of IT. That's like nothing, but really, it is legacy already in this modern age. Um, so it, their journey was: how do you actually, you know, create their service business uh, for the future by Try, uh, taking advantage of the cloud. So they had a problem of how do you actually take the ERP you know, uh, portfolio and take advantage of the cloud. So we helped them with uh, jointly working with them on the SAP you know, applications that they had migrating to the cloud, the IBM cloud. It's a, it's a private cloud, right, that, that got set up. The another example, another spectrum is American Airlines, right? You know, you know, their journey is about way much longer, but you know, for them it's, it's an enterprise transformation that is actually in progress and they want to be able to you know, yeah. get to a completely different point of cloud becoming a true innovation platform. You know, so they want to be pure, fully in the past, right, as a yeah. vision, um, but they understand that they got to go through the IaaS, you know, so I kind of talked about the, the sexiest way in cloud is, oh, it's all, you know, cool clusters, you know, pass based. In fact, forget even cloud, let me go SaaS and everything works beautifully. That's ideal nirvana. I think you know, if we can get there, you know, that's the day well, I'll if you have no retire. legacy, if you have no exactly, install if you base. Have no legacy. Now, but the reality is you know, you're going through a granularity yeah. of some workloads on bare metal, some workloads on VMware, you know, some that I had to containerize, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so in the American Airlines case, you know, you, we have had both the journeys, right? So we have a journey about how do you rewrite 
yeah, rather than you know the rip yeah. and replace analogy that you did, you know, how do you rewrite portions of it completely on the native cloud yeah. while you know you take advantage of the IaaS infrastructure in front of you to be able to gain some cost efficiencies, resiliency efficiencies, et cetera, right? So you got you got these scenarios you know playing out in, in all these plans globally, right? So well, I think you guys got it right. I mean, looking at um, how you're doing the migration, I think you've got a good approach of taking the GTS and the GBS together. Because I think what you're bringing in is that uh, the entry point is different yeah. because every company's different. Yeah. There's no more general purpose software anymore. There's yeah. no more general purpose infrastructure. It's specialized, but standardized at tailored. a lower level. Yeah, it is tailored, right? And the composability yeah. of cloud yeah. native gives them that vision for the future, but you know, why not go cloud native yeah. if you can? Yeah. But bringing the technology stack and the, and the business stack together, I think really is fundamental, I think. Yeah. And that's what you guys are doing. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think the, the one of the other messages we try to uh, do in this is, you know, there is very acceptable level of impatience on, in front of clients, right? I mean, they don't want to take this journey over several years, they want to still get, I mean, I always look at migration is still a means to the end, it is not the end. Clients are not there looking to migrate. They want to <laughs> yeah, right. get to the cloud and start innovating, right? So the faster you can get that migration journey done, is the better off you are. So what you don't apply is just people and expertise, what you apply are tools and innovation and, and automation to be able to get to this point. Yeah. So a lot of the work that we are actually doing is in getting a better understanding of you know, how quickly can you understand and analyze the source systems and arrive at those dispositions we talked about and then be able to create the target yeah. environment much faster so you can start migrating. Yeah, right? it's so a total end to end. Compressing end -to -end. the time frame is so important, right? Yeah. So, All right, yeah. well Shankar, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, IBM fellow, great perspective, and oh, thanks thank for you. the insight. Thank you very much, thanks for hosting me here. Pleasure. All thank right. you, end appreciate to, it. End to end, multiple stacks dealing with, it's the cloud migration story here at IBM, great success points. This is theCUBE bringing you more coverage from day three, exclusive coverage. Stay with us, we've got some great interviews coming up, blockchain, cloud, big data, IOT, all up, up, coming up next. Stay with us, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.